Hi there, there everybody. Welcome <laughs> to tonight's episode of Tales of Everin. Uh, nobody knows who did the summary, so you're getting a live reaction to who's supposed to do the summary, and that is who, John? You. What, what the popcorn? fuck? <laughs> Kayla did it last week. Knight's not here. How come nobody Ooh, reminded me? It can't. <laughs> it can't be entirely up to me to remember that on my own. I'm still wearing because my fucking we school enjoy. idea, right? Oh, idea. No. idea. Can we popcorn it? No, I'll do it. I'll I, fucking do it. I, we just enjoy no, giving down. Joe the the summary when he doesn't know because we enjoy his summaries when it's not written down. God, what the fuck? Did you happen? write notes last session, Joe? No. <laughs> well, I did. So no, it's okay. I'll do it from memory. I it's more it'd be fun, fun that way. Popcorn it. That's true. That's true. Take a shot and go. Everyone roll a d20 in, in the thing and then uh, see whoever gets the lowest has to do summary. No, that's fine. I'll do it. Okay. I, mean, I gave you an out. I gave you an out. No, it's okay. I'm not a <laughs> baby. <laughs> it's book four, chapter six. Oh, yeah, that's right. It is book four, chapter six. That's Wait, awesome. My window. It's really hot in here. Uh, Open your window. You know? Do it. Um. After this session, oh yeah. Wait, oh, should we go to the, to the fucking? Yeah, I was getting ready to roll the intro, but it looked like it looked like you were about to say something, so I didn't want to interrupt. interrupt no, 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 you. go ahead. I'm gonna rest okay. He's out of prison. Boom. We're here. We're back. That's it. That's We're all. back. All right. And you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this in character, too. I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to fucking improvise this in character. Dude, my eyes are about to shut. That's my problem, how? It's not. But I'm oh, well. while DMing. It's fine. <laughs> you can't do that. That's illegal. You guys it's are like... going to be talking to Oprah, and he's so old. He's just going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> all right let's do it here we go so um as we established earlier i'm on summary and my life is perfectly calm at the moment there's no need for panic or anxiety wait at all. should we do the uh, do an announcement i thought this was supposed to be in character should we do it we need to do an announcement oh that's right um this we will not be playing until next uh, maybe uh december 13th 14th hey my birthday oh, nice. oh happy so, early birthday um, happy birthday but what's funny is that this episode we're recording right now is coming out november 24th right so when this episode comes out we will still be gone yeah, yeah it'll cool. be like a, it'll be like uh, a three-week break but it won't yeah. be as big of a break as it is for us yeah which is a big one yeah it's a big one biggest one uh mm -hmm. So next episode, when you guys are watching this, we'll have no idea what the hell is going on. Yep. That's true. Which is why it's right, so yeah. incredibly important that this summary is mm -hmm. uh, correct. Yes. So when we take look, it away. When we, so when take we it away, Jack. <laughs> I had to get into character. <laughs> I forgot what Rian looked like. Go. Picking up where we left off. The adventures that we've been on in the past several months have been tumultuous, to say the least. However, of all of the things that we experienced, from Yursa and I leaving the Mallow Grove, to meeting Lady Jim Cloak, to fighting against vampires, all of it is things that I, I, I could mentally handle, I could mentally prepare myself for. There were things I... Uh, I could have happen to me, process it, and move on. Meeting Sayori? No. Never in a thousand years did I ever think I would see her. Never did I think I would meet her, let alone be standing face to face with her. And even more so, never did I think that I would be in a situation where I would have to choose between a friend, a companion, my chosen family. 
and my blood. I thought my blood was gone, but apparently it's not, as she says. I don't know what to do. I don't know if there is a turn of phrase that is worse than a rock in a hard place, but that's where I'm at. That is where I am. The conversation went fine, but I didn't feel good leaving it. I don't know. I know that Basil's situation with her sister has always been tumultuous, and Yursa's situation with her sister has always been, well, um, much brighter, happier. I'd like to talk to the two of them to see if what I'm feeling is normal, or if it just means that maybe we never were meant to encounter each other. I don't know. But sadly, the day did not end there, as the work we do is never done. We moved on. As we needed to break Yursa, not Yursa, book, we needed to break Basil out of the jail. Oof, man, that was a rough sentence. Let me take that again. I'm going to take it back. Can I take it back from the queue line? Okay, thank uh, take you. Take it from the top. Yeah, from okay, the can you give me can you yeah, give me a lights up? Top. Can you give me a lights uh, up? I don't know what the fuck that means. Just say lights, lights up. up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can be on book for this one. No, it's okay. I don't need it. I I know the lines. They're just I got to organize. Let's them, back okay? it up. Okay, yeah. Lights are going up. Okay, um feed the line three, beforehand. Three, two, one, lights up. And I might talk to Basil about this because I know the situation with her sister has always been tumultuous, but uh, I think I'll also talk to Yursa about it as well, as her relationship with Willow has been much happier, to say the least. So hopefully between the two of them, I'll be able to see if the feelings I'm having are legitimate or if, if maybe I'm just grasping at straws. I don't know. But sadly, the adventuring day doesn't end there for us, as there's always more that we have to do. Next thing we had to worry about was breaking Basil out of jail. Taken there by her sister, Vasati, but Vasati promised us that she would be safe and that we would have a way to get her out. And Vasati lived up to her promise, that is, that is sure, giving us blueprints of the prison so we may have an easier time breaking her out. However, there are always issues that arise. We have to go in through the sewer, which wasn't great. I'll be the first to admit. I can typically grin and bear most things, but that was disgusting. And then we had to figure out how to get past the grate. How to get past the grate and into the prison itself through the sewers. Yursa had the marvelous idea of shifting herself into an octopus and then using her octopus strength as well as Vey and Gak, they were able to lift up the grate so Gak and I could get in. And I have never in my time with this group been a part of something more ridiculous and more covert and more high stakes than breaking into probably one of the most highly guarded areas in the city and taking out our friend, getting her out of there. It was successful for the most part, except for... Um, I think Yursa killed somebody. I'm not exactly sure. I think he's just unconscious and heavily injured, but he'll probably be in a wheelchair for most of the rest of his life. Um, no, I'm sure he's fine. Never mind. Um, I'm sure he's doing great with a skull fracture. <laughs> anyway, um, on top of that, we also had a situation where we were seen. And then Gak did something. He... Yursa was on his head, and he said something about how he was the squid man. And the guard reacted the exact same way I did. And I know Gak. And I still was just like, what? Anyway, we got Basil out. We saved her. All right, uh, sorry, uh, cut. We need to take that back. It was actually a sending spell to the, the guard himself. So if you want to start back at the top of that line... Uh, okay, we'll get lights down, and, um, all right, action. And then Gak, well, he said, um, no, sorry, sorry, I fucked that up. Can I, I can I take it back one more no, time? No, that's okay. okay. That's okay. okay. Yeah. We'll take Thank it back. Okay. back. Okay. Um, all right, lights down, everyone quiet, <laughs> and, um, just whenever you're ready. 
And then Gak used Sending, uh, apparently to build on to this idea that he was some type of mythological creature, and said something along the lines of, I am the Squid Man, using the spell Sending. I, well, I had the exact same reaction that that guard had. What? And I even know Gak. That's what made it so odd. Regardless, we still were able to save Basil, get out of the prison, and head back to the Sapphire Chalice. No, Bannered Mare. No, a tavern. To our home base in East Varia, or in Elden. There we go. Got there eventually. Believe it or not, those are the lines as written, so continue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We made our way back to the tavern we were staying at. And we decided that the last thing we were going to do in Elden was conference uh, and meet with the important individuals that had been parlayed with through the guise of the person they boned. Uh, Marathel! Marathel? I got his name. It just took me a second. Uh, through Marathel. And, well, we... We got back to the tavern, and now we wait on those meetings. I, from now on, I'm never going to tell you when it's your turn to do summary. <laughs> yes, it's so, it's so. Was good. that not what happened? I, really did good. you not hear the last? Part oh, of you, what said, I just said? <laughs> you said you. It registered now. You said that was so good. <laughs> Um, I immediately assumed you were going to say it was trash because that's how lowly I think of myself. Anyway. Uh, no, I, so I do have some notes, but we can, oh God, we can during intermission, we can sit down and just kind of like go through them. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I no, love notes. I, I love critique. Uh, just make sure it's uh -huh. not criticism. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. All right. What's the difference? Wait, is criticism the negative one? Yeah. I get them all. Oh, it's I, all I, criticism. I, yeah, I always get a criticism. Yeah, that's fine. I can it's I can criticism. <laughs> yeah. Look at this lighting that's trash on my end. Whatever. Who cares? I'm standing up because I'm going to fall asleep. I'm bringing it in. I'm trying. I look laggy. Am I laggy on your screen? You're a little discombobs. Well, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Best day ever. Best day ever. John, are we going to start or is, no. that, is that just something we want to... Look, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I'm, I think I'm going to call it quits tonight I think on the whole just campaign. Gonna, I think we're just going to... Is the stream unmuted? Just stop. Okay, yeah, the stream's unmuted. Good, that would have been that tragic. That would suck if it wasn't. <laughs> I feel like every uh, time we're recording, 20 minutes in, Joe goes, is the stream unmuted? <laughs> it's my biggest anxiety. <laughs> so, bringing it back in. You guys are in the Sapphire Chalice, if I remember correctly. Is that where we left off? Yes. <laughs> I don't know why you didn't I, get that from my summary. I was just so enamored with the, the large amount of words you were using and how well it was put together <laughs> from nowhere. Um, the party has entered back into the Sapphire Chalice. I believe you guys were trying to get a meeting with Vasadi, correct? Did we yes. have like three not... meetings, I think. Yeah, I we were going to meet with Vasadi and we were going to meet uh, with, with Oberon. Yes. Oberon. Yes, he invited we us have to dinner, dinner tonight. Tonight yeah. we have dinner. Yeah. Tomorrow there's a Vasadi meeting, and there's also another thing. A meeting with meeting. Uh, Orion, with Marathon's Orion. brother, yes. the master of education in Arcana. And then um, if everything goes well with Vasadi, meeting with Rian's sister. Yes. yes. Now, I don't remember. Uh, Those were the four meetings. I do not remember. Uh, are we in the Bannered Mare? I think we're in the Bannered Mare because... That's where uh, our hotel is. Lazarus leaves. just talked to you guys, invited you to dinner, and that's where we left off. You guys were talking about sending messages to the individuals you wanted to meet with. So the message to Vasadi and the message to Sayori has not been sent yet, I believe. No. I do not know yet. So we will pick up with the party after Lazarus oh, has left. Um, Gak messaged um, Wolfric. Yes. Ulfric, yes. yes. Ulfric. <laughs> Oops. He does not know where he needs to meet you all. No, he forgot <laughs> to say Shredina. Uh, but um, 
Am I uh, okay? I, I hate to bring this back up. Is my camera really laggy? Because I'll just sit back down again. I think it's fine. fine. It's not that okay. laggy. On my end, it looks really bad. It's not really I'll just, bad. I'll just there, stop looking. There's at no lag, but it seems like there's like some in between frames, which makes me feel like it's at a different frame rate. But it's fine. Yeah, it you're like you're like, like um sixty ping right now. Okay. It's not that bad. It's playable. Not that bad. Mm-hmm. There we go. What does that look like? Boom. Whatever. Um, you're, you're like so, 40 ping now. That's awesome. So, we are going to pick up where we left off with the party. Lazarus has left. So, you all ha are in the room. Um, what would you guys like to do? Mm. Well, it, it is what time of the day? Um, is this the morning or at night? Because I think we all agreed we were going to go to bed. Night. Well, aren't we supposed no, to have it dinner was during... tonight? Yeah, the dinner is tonight. Oh, okay. um, I'm so sorry. So you guys broke Basil out afternoon, I mm -hmm. believe. Oh, I think the time on the actual game is correct. It's around uh, 6. No, that would be 7 o'clock, wouldn't and it? And we're supposed to meet him at 8 o'clock for dinner? Supposed to meet him at eight o'clock for dinner. Oh shit! We're well, just gonna say we're just gonna say it's four p.m. Cool. Okay. Uh, Gak, you did get a short rest from when you were in the Sapphire Chalice, yes. talking to Marathel previously. Anybody watching? We're just trying to get everything back together. <laughs> <at this point>. <laughs> <laughs> you don't make apologies. Organized. We're not organized. No, we're perfectly um, organized. This is just I'm having a lot of fun. Okay, four uh, p.m. We have a dinner at eight. Cool. That's correct. So, Seekers and Zania, what would you like to do? I can't I can't send any more messages. I'm I'm all I'm empty. Well, uh I think that if there are any more messages that need to be sent, we will have to do them in the morning. For now, I think we need to focus on what we're going to say uh, exactly and what we're planning with with this dinner with Oberon tonight. This is, I, I suppose, a bit unexpected since we are supposed to meet with him, I thought, in a few weeks. I wonder if they've taken back their invitation. Uh, I don't know, but what I do know is that my mom always said to not make plans because when the plan when they don't go the right way, then you're trying to do what the plans were. Mm -hmm. All right, so I agree. <laughs> so we should just go to the dinner and see what happens. It's the best idea, then. Is that what you're I, saying, Gak? Yeah, I just think, like, I think whatever we think is going to happen is not going to happen. Fine. Just because the fact that they're doing this at all is a little weird. So we should be prepared to, like, fight, I guess. But I don't think that's, I don't, I hope that doesn't happen because I don't think we're prepared for that. But I, yeah, I don't know if us preparing for, like, making a plan for stuff is going to, be very helpful but Thanks. we're also used to plans going wrong so <laughs> well I, I think you're right this was a very unexpected turn and if we try to plan for the unexpected it won't go our way so I we think. should plan for the expected I think that we don't need to plan much Gak I, I agree with you on that I think all we need to determine now is is there any circumstance that whatever Oberyn proposes we go with is there any conceivable proposal he could make where we would agree to his terms I can't think of one um I can think of us lying Vey is going to say, in the presence of a vampire, 
the vampire. Are they good at protecting their lives? I would assume that something that old, someone that powerful could be more aware of it. Well, Rian's old and powerful. I don't know if he's good at collecting lies. I don't think we should be agreeing to anything that he says. Unless he's willing to back off, stand down. I can't see that that's what this meeting is about. And as much... As strong as we all are, what authority do we have to, I suppose, bargain with him for things like land, uh, rights to people? Uh, he's made it very aware that what he wants is something that morally is not okay. And it's not like we have anything to offer him. It's not that I can think of. I don't think so. I think that we should go into this um, discussion trying to keep everything as close to the chest as possible. I agree. I definitely um, think we should not mention anything that has to do with the Deep Father unless specifically asked about. And the more he knows about that, that, the more difficult the situation becomes. Maybe. What do you think he did to Lazarus? <clears throat> to break him. My what? mom used to make me stand in the corner and put hold my arms out when I did something bad. And they mm. got really heavy. Yeah. It's probably something like that. Yeah, it's pretty tough. I'm not sure. Does Oberyn even know that we know what he's planning? Oh. I don't... I wouldn't think so. But you said that old people have a good idea of that kind of stuff, so it's possible that he knows we know or assumes we know. I mean, I thought my family had no idea where I've been all this time, and apparently they knew exactly where I lived. So I think no matter how much you think you're hiding something, it could be as plain as day. Is that is that what Vashadi told you? <laughs> my father actually told me that. He, he knows where my home is. You saw your father? Um... Yes, I, I did. He came and visited me when I was in prison. Are you okay? I'm fine. Um, nothing I didn't expect. I... <laughs> he... thinks very less of me, I'm sure, and... He has to know I'm gone, or he's going to very soon. Um, but I don't think I was the biggest concern to him, so it is what it is. Okay. Thank you for asking, though, Jack. Of course. Um... Uh Oh, go ahead. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, I'm sorry, Gak. No, it's okay. Um, Leanne? Mm. I don't want you to have to choose between your family and mine. I know I can tell you've been thinking about it. I know that I don't. It's just... Uh, 
I know that your family hasn't been kind to you. But it still doesn't... It doesn't feel right. Do you know what I mean? Maybe. I would say at this point in time, the only one that wouldn't feel right is Vasati. I... And this may make me insane, but I'm perfectly okay with killing my parents. But... And I, I thought the same way about my sister, but being here and her helping me, it's made the situation a lot more difficult, I would say. But that's the issue. She bears the mark as well. I know. And I don't think, uh, just after my brief interaction with Sayori, she doesn't seem like a half-measures kind of person. Well, um, maybe she's more understanding than we know as of now, after just one meeting. You are siblings, but she is probably also keeping you at such a distance. I hope so. But I just wanted to clear that now. I would not hold it against you to choose Sayori when the time comes to it. If for any reason the next day or two doesn't go as planned, if I'm not able to convince Vasati, I I will have to tell her that we tried to let her know and that we're trying to do the right thing and unfortunately she's not on the right side. Hopefully she'll but see I, reason. She's really stupid, but she's really smart too. <laughs> and when I talked to her, I could tell she doesn't agree with what my father's doing. And I just got this feeling that she's really scared for being in this deep and she doesn't want to be. Mm-hmm. Maybe seeing you has inspired her to rethink this. I mean, you were able to, messy as it may have been, you were able to walk away from all of it. And look at what you're doing now. That maybe that was a good thing that you guys connected again. That's true. I need a lot of help to convince her. help her see reason when she's been blinded by nothing but lies. <laughs> Absolutely. And and I think I think just sitting down having a conversation about what this is, I mean, you're right, she might not even know the magnitude of the situation that she's gotten herself into. And Well, let's be honest, sometimes when we are under pressure and there's nowhere else to turn, we Sometimes we turn to things that are not always in the light. Right. I think we focus on this dinner tonight. We reach out to Vasadi and speak with her. Maybe if if things go well, maybe we can speak with her this evening or early tomorrow. Give her the chance to make a choice to turn her life around. And at the end of the day, and again, Basil, we are going to support you however you want to approach this, but if she decides not to, at least you can say you gave her the chance. Exactly. And I cannot have any regrets. How it'll have to be. You're right. One day at a time, we'll focus on this dinner. Um, figure out what Oberon wants, what we have to do with it. Maybe see what he did to Lazarus, what changed him so drastically. 
and then focus on the meetings tomorrow. I think that sounds like a great plan. Mm, I agree. Go team. <laughs> <laughs> Yursa quite literally puts her hand in the middle of the room. <laughs> Bates a wolf. Put her hand on top. Freehan <laughs> will do that. Yes! <laughs> he'll be like, where did you learn that? <laughs> um, I saw some kids doing it on the street. It looked uh, fun. We all right. agreed to do something, and then, Gak, you have to put your hand in the middle. <laughs> okay. They? <laughs> uh, you had to be there, John. <laughs> Bay, will you put your hand right here? Sure. Go team! <laughs> Wonderful. Right. Bay's given up. Made our plan, Jonathan. Okay. So what is the plan? Wouldn't you like to know? We're gonna, would, really. <laughs> gonna go to the dinner with no plan. Um, okay, guard that's ourselves, good plan. keep our keep our information close to the chest, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just see what he has to say. And wing it, wing mm -hmm. it. We do best, baby. <laughs> Same. Okay. Is there anything? You got four hours into the dinner. Is there anything that you all want to do before the dinner? <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Good. Um, can we take another short rest, technically? Yeah. So what do we get if we do a short rest? Hit dice back, and if you have the ability, regain some spells, but I don't think clerics have the ability to. No, and I've already Fair. done mine. You can I only do, do it once per long rest. I'll take my um, wild sheet back. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I think um, Gak would probably head to his own room during that time and uh, I think he's going to sit down and try to talk with the book. Okay. What are you doing with the book? Um, Gak's going to sit down with the book and um, He's going to open it up, and instead of like trying to cast a spell or anything, he's just going to put his hands on the book and, and uh, say, Um, so, my, you know my buddy, Rian, he is um, from the Lost City, and his, his sister is from the Lost City, too, and their stuff was, was... Uh, shaking and vibrating um, and there's dangerous stuff around here that has symbols of the of the you know and um, do you have any advice roll a d100 for me Got how to do it. That's okay. I'll do that. Oh, dang it. Come on, just do it. There we go. Hey, I'm figuring out how to DD. Six. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. You hear in your mind, Gak. Sayori. Oh. Um. I'm not. I'm not too sure about the name. Alvain. Alvain. That one, yep. 
I know that one. You hear Keep her safe. Okay, she doesn't really seem like she needs much help. Keep um, him safe. I already plan on doing that one. Destiny. 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 And so, so I'm part of that. Yes. <laughs> okay. You know, you can... I don't know what we're going to say. Um, you hear. Running. Time. And the, it sounds broken up as it's being said. What, what, I don't know what I need to do quickly. Protect. Is all you hear? Okay. I can do that. Thank you for um, helping me. Gak, make a wisdom saving throw. Oh my god! Okie dokie. Oh no, my... It's telling me that there's not a VTT page that's open for, for rolls. Did you go on uh, Foundry and click the I icon did. first? Yeah. That's weird. See if mine's working. Okay, I just reloaded. Okay. Wisdom saves. Yep, mine's not working. Oh, wait, no. Ooh. No, it's not. That's not good. Um, <laughs> question. Yeah. Uh, I still have an inspiration from uh, Lady Gem Cloak. Is that still a thing I have, or did that go away? That's still a thing you have. Okay. Oof, what a waste of a natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> Should I... Uh, it's up to you. Would that would that allow me to roll again or add something to it? It'll allow you to roll again. Okay, I'll roll again. Unnatural 20. Ooh. Where is everyone currently? Um... Uh... Go ahead. I was just gonna say Basil's probably just hanging out in her room, resting. Yeah. Um. I assume we kind of broke for the just to go prepare mm -hmm. for the meal. So yeah, you're still probably be in her room as well. Okay. Rian. Um. I think Rian. Um, since everybody kind of broke off, he'd probably be in the common area of the tavern, not drinking at all, but just trying to surround himself with noise so it wasn't quiet. Okay. They would probably be downstairs as well. Yeah, we can say that. Um, we can say that him and they were just kind of vibing together. Gak, after this conversation, because you rolled really well, the book uh detaches from out of your hands it like throws itself out of your hands and falls onto the ground you almost try to grab it as it falls as it falls and tumbles it opens and you see the pages rapidly uh turning as it lands on one page and both pages you see these runes um like invisible ink being revealed start to reveal themselves on these pages and then light up this bright purple that turns into this yellow and then white and the runes look like they almost lift off the page and they shoot across the room and you feel and all of you 
and those with high perceptions notice well I guess Rien you would notice this you all feel this this uh, immediate arcane energy that uh, emanates uh, from somewhere and there's a rattle throughout the whole tavern um, Rian, you notice that no one else around you notices this at all. This is something that it would it would take people by surprise, and they would probably stop doing what they were doing. They just continue. Um, Vey looks at you. You all look back at each other. Because you rolled really well, all of you gain the benefits of a long rest. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. And you are immune to fear. Oh, God. oh, that's defenses. Customize. Add an option. Immunity. Choose immunity for for twenty four hours. Frightened. Goodness gracious. Bada bing. Mister Gax book. Bada boom. Mister Gax book out here like Mister Beast, just giving away wow. shit. I will just say because you rolled really well, it was it, it was for everybody. If you rolled really poorly, it would have just been for you. Mm. I'm not afraid of you, Mr. Vampire Man. <laughs> uh, Gak, you watch as the book closes. And almost this small arcane wind picks it up off the ground and levitates back into your hand. Can I tell? Obviously, I can tell the, that, like, I feel better, all that stuff. Yes. I can tell something happened. Oh, <sighs> you know, first, thank you, but second, I am constantly more and more confused by you. And then Yak just kind of takes the book and sets it next to him. <laughs> okay. Chip, um, do you feel better, too? Robert. Okay. You great. see there's a little tiny aura glowing around Chip. Oh, Chip can't be scared. <laughs> um, I will point out that uh, Divine Intervention, you roll a D100 and you have to roll below your level for it to mm. work. You Yikes. rolled right below your level. Yeah. Wow. On the D100. That's pretty dang sick. So if that was Divine Intervention, a god was intervening. Ooh. Yeah. yeah interesting so all of you feel this energy sweep through um Rian, because you noticed this there's a sense that it's not harmful what just happened um was not something that was malicious you can just tell especially from the feeling you get um and especially for you there's like this weird connection um like the magic is part of your essence as well. Okay. Um, I think that just based off that, Rian would kind of look to Vey and say, did you feel that? Yes. Um, should I be worried? No, I think it came... Either it came from Sayori or that book. I'm going to go check on Gak and make sure everything's all right. I'll come with you. It's a good idea. Back up. <laughs> Get up. <laughs> okay. head, head to where Gak is at. Okay. You knock on the door? Yep. Okay. Knock, knock. Well, uh, yeah, just a second. Is everything all right in there, Gak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the door opens. And Gak sitting there, and Chip is sprawled out on top of his head, like sleeping. Yeah, uh, everything's fine. Why? Uh, well, um, I just, they and I both just felt something, and it didn't feel harmful, but I felt connected to it. So I figured it was either Sayori or it was the book, and I'm just making sure that it was one of those two things, because the last thing I need is more, more Alvain. Uh, heritage in my life right now. I, it's hard enough sifting out these two things. So you you felt it too then? I did. We both did. Okay. Um. So yes, it was the book. Okay. I was talking to the book. Just 
you know, chilling. And he told me to, I told him about your sister. And he told me to protect her. Mm -hmm. And he also said protect him, which I now realize could be your sister's friend, but I feel like it's you. So, and I told the book that I, I'm already planning on protecting you. Oh. And, and it was kind of hard to hear. And the book said uh, that time was running out. And mm -hmm. I said, I'm not sure what to do quickly. And then... Um, it did a thing it like flew out of my hands and gave us all a good blast I guess uh Rian what is your passive perception again I know it's high 21 okay you look at Gak um and you notice that there is a mark on his left hand right here Visual aid. Where was it? Right here. Oh, on the back of the palm? Uh, can I see it is, what it is? It is the symbol of a fox. <sighs> Wait a minute. I wrote a minute. Is that uh, in a similar style to the it one is that in is... in the exact style. Ooh! Um, Gak, when did you, yeah. uh, is that new as well? Gesturing down to his, uh, the back of his hand. Oh, goodness. Uh, yes. I didn't see it. Oh. So I guess then you're barred from using the phrase, I know this place as well as the back of my hand, then. Well... Yeah, I guess so. We haven't okay. been here very long. Okay, well, all right. Um, <laughs> do you do you remember getting that at all, or was it did it just happen from when that surge of magic happened? Um, I don't remember it, and I feel like I was looking at my hands pretty recently. <laughs> so I'm assuming it happened just now. Well, I don't know what it'll do for you, but at least. For me, I use that rune. It's one of the runes of the Okunai people. There are times when I can hit people with my blade, and the these foxes start to jump around them, keeping them restrained in place. Fiery um, creatures. That rune Ooh. is on my blade right now, and I can do that with it. I'm not sure what it'll do for you, but if you learn how to do something with it, it might have a similar effect. Oh, that's pretty, that's cool. You have, so, can I see it on your thing? Yeah, of course. And he'll, uh, Rian will pull out his sword and show Gak. It's wow. still there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is still there. Okay, Gak stole the symbol. No! <laughs> I'm siphoning your power. <laughs> I'll have to protect you, for you'll not be able to protect yourself. <laughs> Wow. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. <laughs> I know that, like, we're both from Mysteri, and we both have, like, I don't know, like, this book, and not only are we from Mysteri, but we have stuff in that city. Mm-hmm. I think it's just kind of cool. I agree. I think it's very cool. For almost all my life, I've carried this heritage alone. I thought it was going to be that way forever. So I'm glad at least one of the people that I know of that carries that heritage with them is, is you, Gak. I'm glad, too. And Rian will very genuinely smile at that. And Gak's smiling too. He's like, it's crazy that 
for someone who never left their house that there's you can be connected to so many people <laughs> oh I think destiny has a lot to do with it I'll make sure to thank her <laughs> and Rian's gonna look <laughs> to they and just with his brain say let him have this one <laughs> <laughs> Vey, like, was opening his mouth and, like, I'm going to go downstairs. All right. <laughs> Don't worry, Vey, I feel connected to you, too. Love that. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, as that is happening, Yursa. Oh. Yeah. In your head, you hear Hello, sis. Um, hi. It's Willow. How are you? Hope everything's going well. Things over here are great. Miss you. Uh, as I get my word counter up. Willow. I am so happy to hear your voice. Things are vampire, which I believe is one word. <laughs> she stops herself from saying that. <laughs> but we have it well under control. I miss you more than words. And that's all she has. <laughs> There's a pause again and you hear Is it working? Oh, um yeah. Uh oh, I've used so many words. I miss you so much. <laughs> um and then it cuts off. And then there's a pause, and then another one comes through. I'm glad you are okay. I don't think vampire is a word. Should I be concerned? Anyways, miss you. Love you. Sorry, There's five one. more. Um, how are the rifts going? Okay. Whew. Please be mindful of the rift. Strange things are happening to others. Please try to contact Sludge for me. Watch for Vandarin. That's good. Sorry, I know that threw, threw some things at you, that one. There's another sending that is sent. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't hear it, but you could just get this feeling of an audible sigh from the person who is casting these sendings, <laughs> and you know who it is. Uh, you know it's Alora, uh, oh, the funny. queen of Lunaria, who's doing this. Um, Thanks, bestie. You hear... Noted. The rift has gotten a little bit un... I don't want to wait, John, because the yeah. stream is... Yeah. So sorry. I don't know what happened there. It just crashed. That's okay. How's the stream looking? Uh, it's fixed now. Okay. Hey! I'll start over. She says, Noted, the rift has become a little unstable, but nothing I can't handle. I'm hearing word 
that small tears are opening. Not rifts. Something's going on. I assume you know what. Oh, I'll hold finish this one. Just playing telephone? Yes. <laughs> Fuck. Ah! Okay. Okay. Pairs are correct. Be ever vigilant. I cannot share now, but please keep me updated. We'll find a way to talk more soon. And that's just your sense. Okay. Um, for a good 20 to 30 minutes, that bracelet uh, around your wrist is warm, giving you the feeling that Willow is continuing to think about you. Oh. Um, yeah, yours will do the same. So, with that, Basil, where are you? Are you still in your room? Yeah, I'm still hanging out in my room. Um, I was thinking about asking you as a player to a DM, um, if you knew that your friend was still currently staying on your property with um, a whole underground terror country, um, would you send sending to them, urging them to leave? Um, that seems like a good idea. Yeah. Uh, That's what I was thinking. You can totally do that. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm typing out my message. Okay. Um, to uh, Myra. Myra. Her. Her. Um, I'm trying to think, because usually I tell her where I'm going next. And I don't want her to try to, like, send a letter to the Blackmores. <laughs> um, That's fair. Um, okay. No. Do I even have it? Marita. More, yeah. Why was I thinking Myra? Session 0 0.5. Um. While that's happening, is anybody doing anything else? Um, I don't really have anything in particular. <gasps> Yursa is going to play the kindness card, and she's going to make a bunch of little daisy flower necklaces to give to the vampires. Oh. As a gift <laughs> of goodwill. With garlic attack. Yeah. Please <laughs> make no. Little please. Baby cloves. Please make them from sunflowers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's gonna. Uh, uh, yours is not that cheeky though, but she would make like something like <laughs> just to pass the time. Okay. okay. Also, John, technically, uh, Basil's session zero is now called Prelude Chapter Three. <laughs> so yeah. session 0 0.5 boom uh, you got got she was food. she was session 0 0.6 anyway so you're just wrong okay. boom you got got fool boom 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 boom, boom. I have 
<laughs> written out my message. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody kill that widow figure, um. please. <laughs> Who just fucking sniped <laughs> Jonathan? <laughs> oh. uh, Rachel? Um, so yeah, I'm going to start with my message, and then what Basil would probably do afterwards is try to connect with her mom. Okay. Okay. My love, I'm safe. No questions, but for your safety, please leave my property immediately. I will give more info when I can. Love you. There's a brief pause in here. <sighs> it's great to hear from you. I was forced to leave your property. The government has taken over. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's not good. <laughs> Love you. <That's> it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll send a message back. I don't want to try to use all my spells, but I feel like that deserves a follow-up. Use them all. Yes. <laughs> Love it, John. Um. Um, while you're writing the next message, I will say okay. that they does Rian eventually go back down to Vey, or is he staying up? Oh no, he definitely would have gone back down to Vey. Okay. Uh, Vey says to you, "Well, while we're waiting for well the dinner, I'm going to go talk to Meridil. Um, I'll meet you all there." What does the um, deep father tattoo tattoos look like? They look like not that. Um, this. Well, how do you fucking explain that to someone? <laughs> mm. In yes. twenty-five or more words. <laughs> <laughs> Bendy cross, um, devil horn, down moon. <laughs> okay, upside down crescent moon, barren tree, mm -hmm. staples. upside down crescent moon <sighs> with two okay. staples on each side of the crescent moon. I don't, I don't understand what's so hard about that. I think that's a staple. <laughs> Can you just have her Google okay. it? So, yeah. Okay, hold on. Two okay. bull ear moon thick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's exactly no, what bull, it is. Horns, moon, stick. stick. Yep. Bull horn, moon, stick. That's the symbol of the Deep Father. <laughs> is there like a, a symbol similar to this in like religious iconography that she could say it's kind of like this, but with this instead? Oh, uh, that's a great idea because if someone said stay away from bull horns and moon sticks. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm staying away from cattle prods. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that means. No. Um. <laughs> okay, uh, John, um, the rule of improv is yes and. <laughs> so you're supposed to make this easier on us. <laughs> Too uh, you could have at least thick. no butted. <laughs> no. No, it's okay. There's not a Jesus in this world, and that's incredibly apparent. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because if there was, everything would be better. <laughs> if that's what you want to believe, sure. 
<laughs> I like Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell I work at a Catholic <laughs> school? <laughs> Holy shit. All right. I love Jesus. Um, <laughs> anyway. I don't think it would make sense, and I don't think Basil would know this, uh, but I, if I wanted to create uh, what this symbol would be, it would be the culmination of the entire abyssal alphabet in one symbol. Jesus. <laughs> what are there, like seven letters? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. People who speak abyssal are fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe like... it's the symbol for prince and abyssal. <laughs> I don't know. It's definitely the symbol for Prince. <laughs> Not that Prince. The artist formerly known as. as this is what the, happened after he got done the, with music. Whatever. It doesn't have a... He never, became never, never the mind. You have to describe it as a fucking upside down moon stick with it's staples. That's what you... Demogorgon formerly known as. I mean, it does kind of Go ahead, share some resemblance with the Prince symbol. It looks exactly like it. Okay. <clears throat> oh shit something seriously bad's happening stay away from merge two bullhorns moonstick tattooed people sorry it's confusing use your brain love you there is a delayed <laughs> response <laughs> I'm sure when we see each other again, you'll elaborate more on what <laughs> the hell you just said. But I will be staying away. Thanks, love. That's it. God, the sending spell is the worst. I know. <laughs> it's the best. And they have at least given us like 35. It's the best worst. <laughs> it's the best worst spell. We're going to get to a point in this campaign where we have so many potential side quests that all every character that can cast fit sending uses all their level three spells on sending and there's just 12 messages in a row that john has to deal with i'm just glad that basil no longer has revivify <laughs> i still have revivify you have three third level spell slots oh yeah dude i'm a, yeah get wrecked no way yeah um, way and I have a diamond, so Yahweh. I'm ready to. <laughs> also, <laughs> also doesn't exist in this. World. Let's I bring do it. Only Let's have bring it back. One fourth level. Sorry. Spell slot sorry, though. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And I have one diamond, so wow. no that one is strong as shit. I need to start reading your fucking <laughs> Jehovah. <laughs> Get fucked. <sighs> All right. So, anything else anybody's doing? Um, Basil would want to talk to her mom. Ah, roll a religion check. <laughs> okay. Not good. <laughs> Basil's mom. Okay. I have no time for you. <laughs> what do you say Get to off my your line. mom? Um. Hi, mom. Um, I'm sure as you saw, I'm, I was in prison. I know no parent really wants to hear that coming from their child. Um, but it was totally not my fault. Um, it was the parents you, no offense, set me up with when you reincarnated me. Um, but I'm out, thanks to my wonderful friends. Um... We're about to go have dinner with some vampires. Um, thank you for giving me blood that burns them when they drink my blood. Um, I'd say that's a great skill to have that I did not know I had. Um, in all seriousness, I, I could use some advice. Um, I'm worried that my team will have to choose between my sister and Rian's newly found sister. Um, his sister 
Sayori wants to kill people like my sister for working with the dark father, deep father. And I think my sister does not want to be a part of it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to convince her to not, not be a part of it. And I just feel really lost because I thought I was just going to leave them for the rest of their lives and I was ready to come here and slay all of them. And now this problem has come up and I feel like I don't really know how to handle it. Do I try to put myself in danger to help my sister who just now decided to be kind to me? It's possible that she was as abused as I was, but I never noticed. Um, yeah, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to do. We're talking tomorrow, so I guess if you have any advice, I would um, greatly appreciate it. W. You don't hear any words, and you don't get like a response. Um, but there is a general feeling and sensation of being watched. Um, but not in a way that, you know, uh, would be eerie. It's comforting. Um, you do remember that every time the Raven Queen talks to you, uh, it does thin the gates, so at this point mm -hmm. she's choosing not to, but you can tell she is taking in what you're saying and listening. Mm -hmm. And she's there. Just because I was in prison, I told you it's not my fault. Yes, we were, we knew it was going to happen sometime, but... Okay, fine. Um, I love you. I, I'm sure you have your reasons not talking to me, and I respect that, and I will not push you. Um, I love you, and we'll talk when we can. You're... <laughs> You can feel the sensation of warmth around you after you say that. Um, just comforting and warmth. Um, mm. And there's just this sensation, this thought that comes to your mind of be careful. Mm. Is that it? Yeah. All right. Um, Yursa, Gak, anything? Um. Uh, I wish yeah, Yursa doesn't have sending on her own or something. Or sending? I I don't. Yursa doesn't have sending actually. Whew. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, no, she's she's. I think she's all right. Okay. I think uh, Yursa will actually get a knock at her door. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she will. I think she would have been kind of finishing up the last of her little flower necklace that she's made. She's made five. She's not really sure who to expect at this party, but there's a total <laughs> of five, and the largest one and the most vibrant is for Oberon. But she gets up. And opens the door. Hi, Yersa. Hi, Gak. Uh, what can I do for you? Um, so, real quick. First off, do you feel like re... re... rejuvenated? Oh. Yes. I, I do. Was, was that... was that you? Um, that strange surge, I guess. It wasn't. It was my book, but um, oh, it it helped us feel all rested, so we can 
protect each other and protect Sayori. It wanted me to protect Sayori. Did. Um, so one, I just wanted to ask if you felt that too, because I know that Rhiannon and Vay felt it. So now I just got to ask Basil, but I'm assuming she did. Chip felt it too. I, I did, and thank you. It, I feel much, much better. And yes. I'm, I'm glad that wants us to protect her. That must mean... I hope it means that she's going to be on our side. I hope so, too. Um, Thank you. Yeah, of course. My my other thing... Um, I can... I can do more sending now. Should I do that? Or should I wait? Actu actually, um... Would you mind doing me a favor? Oh, yeah, what? If you can do more sending, there is someone I have been trying to reach, uh, and I asked my sister to do so, but I'm not sure if she's able to get a response. Um, this person's very inclusive, so I just wanted to double check to see if there was anything else I can hear from them, uh, if you don't mind sending them a quick message. Oh, no, I can do that. Okay. And your soul will offer to take Gax hands. Okay. okay. I don't know how sending works. So I, said. <laughs> I think we initially said that, like, did we say that you could use sending and uh, cast it for somebody else? Is that did we say I that eventually at some point? I, I thought so that's sure. what I thought that's what Willow was just doing. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly what Willow was doing. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I don't uh, I don't think we've ever done it, but I think that yeah. Um, yeah, so she is going to reach out to Yield Sludge. Um. Okay. Oh, let me get this word counter back up. <laughs> Wait, sorry, I'm going to pass. Your time, Yursa. Yeah, she's thinking real hard. Gax just has his eyes closed, holding Yursa's oh. hands. <laughs> oh fuck, that's. I I over Yursa over speaks. Um. Okay, all she's gonna say is, Sludge, this is Yursa Moonglade. Rifts are at risk. Please be vigilant. Contact others if able. And that's all she's gonna say. Now, I, I don't know if she'll respond, but if she does, just let me know. Okay. You get a response. You're saying you would get the response because it was channeled through you. Okay. I have felt it. I will attempt to contact the others. Something is changing. I can feel it. That's what you get back. Okay, well, this is good, and... Not good, but good. Contact is always good. I, I think... Well, um, I don't, I don't want to keep using your spells. Um, I think that is okay. Thank you, Gak. Yeah, of course. I I think I'm, I'm gonna message Ulfric and let him know about Shredina so he's not waiting. And then... Do you think that I should message Celia? Especially okay. since we're about to go see her family. Do Gabriel's dead. I think that you should. 
message maybe Gabriel instead. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, um, yeah, I do like Gabriel more. I, love Gabriel, yeah, I just think Gabriel might be more responsive. Um, but yes, I think it's a good idea to warn them what we're walking into today. Both of them, actually. I mean, okay. if we're lucky, maybe things will change in a positive way that the next meeting may not happen. I don't want to hold our breath, but but yes, you should contact them. Okay. Do you think, is there anything I should tell them? I, I'll make, I need to tell Wolfric, Shredina, <laughs> and um, just check in on our Gabe and see how he's doing and let him know that we're going to meet his family for for supper. Yes. Um, that we have been invited to speak with Oberon uh, very abruptly by a reformed Lazarus. Not sure what the details are yet, but we will keep them updated and to be on standby. Okay. Sorry I was asking, I just, I was a little nervous since last time when I messaged Wolfric, I forgot to tell him where to go, which was very <laughs> important. No, it is it is okay, it is good to double check. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll do that. Okay. And Gak is just still standing there and he starts casting sending. <laughs> Your son will be support line. The amount of sendings in this set <laughs> is ridiculous. Oh yeah, that's what you get for giving us a long rest, and we're about to do more sendings when it when we wake up. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Uh, hey, Wolfric, it's Gak. The place to go is Shredina. The thing is happening on their island near uh, nearby is one word <laughs> That's the, thing, <laughs> the thing is happening <laughs> on their island nearby nearby is one word <laughs> that should be and then that's where it ends Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, I already started traveling. Figured it was somewhere in that direction. I'll start heading to Shradina. I'll stay there. Let me know. No, hold on. Message me when close. Oh, you said this sucks that you can't respond back. <laughs> uh, it does. It. I. Uh, one day we will find a device or a spell that will allow us to talk consecutively and consistently. That'd be pretty cool. It you would. guys just make the telephone? <laughs> We're going to. <laughs> I think someone should invent the telephone. Um, yeah, uh, Wolfric said he's already heading and he'll go to Shredina and he'll wait there. And then we need to let him know when we're close. Okay, that sounds good. A, a good plan to have. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to message Gabe now. Okay. He closes his eyes and starts squinting again. Hey, Gabe. It's Gak. We are in Alden. Lots going on. As a school administrator. We still up <laughs> for meeting <laughs> in Shredina. Dinner with Black 
Moore's tonight. Wish us luck. And that's 25. Damn, he threw the, the dinner in there. <laughs> um, You get a response. Hello, Gak. We have just exited Riffle. We are on our way. Please be safe. Don't let him... No, he says, don't tell him about us. Okay. Um, so they just left Riffolk and uh, he said to not let the Blackmoors know about them, which I wasn't planning on saying anything. Anymore. I agree. I, I don't think it should come up and we will avoid it at all cost. Yeah. So... I think everything sounds good to go. I think so, too. Good job. Good job, Yursa. Yursa will give Gak a high five. Gak will grab the hand. Uh, okay. <laughs> that works, too. And Yursa will shake it. Yeah, and he's, like, shaking it. <laughs> we'll, like, we'll work on our high fives and Yursa's hand is like all the way up and Gax is just like <laughs> down a little bit <laughs> we'll, we'll really work on those <laughs> we'll figure it out I think if there's nothing else I assume the party dresses in their best absolutely Gak, yes. yeah, we still Gak got our wearing his sequin suit yep Yes. From the Blackmore yep. ball. Still got the ballsy outfits. I'll say all of you can mark off one gold because those were like blood stained and, and kind of broken up a little bit. So got you've them, got them repaired. Got them dry cleaned. <laughs> and dry cleaned. Um, by they. By they. <laughs> <laughs> just, this is ridiculous. Uh, just going and sewing. Um, so before we jump into this, as it becomes nighttime, as. Around seven o'clock, you all start making mm -hmm. your way. Um, Rian, as you are getting dressed, you notice as you're kind of taking off everything that something kind of falls out of your pocket. It looks like an invitation. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, it is. It has the symbol of the Black Wars, and it looks like an invitation that will get you through the archways into the Emerald Grove. Okay. Well, I hope this doesn't incriminate us anyway in the future. <laughs> I'll pull it up and... <laughs> and um, you all dress your best. Start making your way. You get to the archways. Um, Rian, you display the invitation and you all are led through the streets of the Emerald Grove. For those who have not been here, um, it is beautiful it is immaculate you can see these um pink blossom trees that almost look like magically leaves are not even falling off but there are uh leaves kind of going across like petals going across the air as you're walking through um as you're walking on the stone streets you leave a very uh faint uh bit of a footprint behind that is magically enhanced you can tell that like the the cobblestone sparkles and as you walk on it it leaves small little footprints behind um everything here is well uh tailored uh well kept the buildings are immaculate um the buildings kind of represent an um uh, what's the word mirror Almost the Emerald Castle that if you were to look up, you can see the bright green aesthetic and outside of this castle. Um, it is beautiful. I will ask this. Basil. 
Yes. You're disguised, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Basil, there is a definite feeling of anxiety mm -hmm. uh, as you are walking through the Emerald Groves, which is the same place your father's estate is, your family home mm -hmm. is. Um, you were led through and you are led to the estate that Rian once saw, where supposedly Oberyn Blackmore calls his home while apparently doing business within Aelden. Um, a beautiful elven made uh, emerald and dark obsidian building that has some gothic features, but most of which are elven in shape. Um, you can see that this building doesn't look like it belongs to a vampire. Uh, it's probably made this way to not give off the vibe of vampire. Um, but you all are left there as you walk in through the iron gates, through this beautiful garden, um, and get to the door of the Blackmore Estate. We'll take a break. Small bathroom break. Ooh. Come back. For dinner. And, and we will dinner. be you will be dining mm. with vampires. I'm sure in the menu will be vegetarian friendly for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> we will be right back. Okay. Let's take Maybe. a quick bathroom break and then let's uh, let's get into this. Maybe.
Hi. Jumping back into this game. <laughs> <laughs> we left off as the party has traveled from the Bannered Mare, dressed in their best. They arrive at the Blackmore Estate in Alden. You arrive at the door. Who knocks? You're so knocks. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, her knocks are like tap, tap, tap. Yeah, but it's a massive door, so it makes oh. a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> Got a knocker on it. Yeah. Look at the size of them knockers. <laughs> okay, get out. Anyway, sorry, John. Go ahead. As you knock, um, the door slightly creaks open, almost as if by itself. An opening. Uh, I don't know if this is a good song for this. No. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Um, no. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm trash. Um, That's okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Mm, mm, yes. <laughs> this is good. Opening the door. You don't see Oberyn. You don't see even Lazarus. You see a different individual altogether. One that you've never met before. A beautiful uh, woman with long brown hair that looks like it has red accents throughout it. These very pointy, piercing ears. Uh, dark red lipstick and very uh, black eyeshadow around the eyes. Her iris is almost this pale white. Um, wearing very beautiful red and black attire. Opens his door and says, Ah, you must be our guests. Lucila, as she points her hand out towards Rian. Very nice to meet you, Lucia. And Rian will shake her hand. You see this. John. Wow. Why? Why do you have to put that in front of us? <laughs> 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 What's wrong with you? <laughs> Please, right this way. As she uh, opens you. the door further and leads you all inside. Yes, I follows. Okay. The rest of you follow? Yes. Yes. Okay. As you follow the door behind you, <laughs> and there's this very quick sense of all right, this is happening. We're here. Um, you walk down this beautiful um, hallway. Uh, the exterior, elven made, looks almost bright and and uh, fits right in. The interior, however, you can tell as soon as you walk in, just looking at the windows, they are blacked out on the inside. No sun can get in. You can see that they... Uh, have painted and lined the inside of here in very dark colors, very dark reds and maroons and uh, blacks and dark, dark browns. There are uh, chandeliers hanging from every every 15 or so feet um, in this very beautiful 20-foot uh, main hallway, that 20-foot uh, tall main hallway that leads. Um, Lucila leads you down further and further and says um, and what do we have the pleasure of your company tonight I didn't hear much from Oberyn uh, well 
he wanted to speak with us on, I assume, very important matters regarding his family and I suppose his plans for future. Hmm. We're not entirely sure ourselves. We were actually supposed to meet him at his home, not here in a, in a few weeks. This is rather sudden for us. Well, Oberyn is a businessman. I'm excited to have you all for dinner. Right this way. As she continues to walk by, and you can see that there are mirrors throughout here. Uh, and as she walks by, you can see that she has no reflection, obviously. Um, she continues to walk, and eventually the door opens, and she points to a dining area. A large, large room with red walls and a large, long uh, dinner table. <laughs> Hello, I am Nando, Nando the Relentless. Guillermo. <laughs> 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 Where's their um, familiar, John? <laughs> you're so would hand her one of the flower necklaces she's made. Here you go, this is a gift from us. You know, as, to, to brighten it up a little bit. As you pointed out, um, she looks at it and says, mm. that, is, that is a very nice gesture. Um, I think that you would be very disappointed if I was to touch it. Oh, uh, why, why is that? <laughs> and she grabs it, and you can see as soon as she grabs it, the flowers start to wilt and die. As she places it around her neck, the entirety of the flowers wilt and die and dry up. It is still beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Yours' entire being for a hot second kind of dies a little. Um... She tries not to drop the smile on her face. Yes, um... Well, there there is beauty in, in death, so... Yeah, there, there is. Ah, I'm sorry, I almost didn't see you. What is your name? Oh, um... Pearl. That is my name. Pearl. Beautiful name. <laughs> Thank you. Right this way. As she leads you all in. Yeah, your soul um, looks so big, so like, oh, I didn't know we were using the <laughs> <laughs> it, it just got, I was sitting there, I was like, oh, shit, wait, do I stay as Basil? I don't remember. It's too late, you're Pearl now. I'm, I'm Pearl now. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. Uh, as you walk into the dining area, you see something that looks like this. I hope I have given you vision. You have. Okay. Yes. Oh, it's so pretty. Is it Christmas time? I don't worry about that stuff. I just worry about the other stuff. <laughs> no, it's Elias. <laughs> it's... Stop it! Also, I swear to God, this is this is Laszlo right here. I swear to God. <laughs> this same portrait is in what we do in the shadows. <laughs> There's Nadja. <laughs> Nadja. Laszlo. Laszlo. You really are oh, the most the most in, <laughs> in Alden. There is just a guy in there that is, you know, a little bit, a little bit rotund, really long black hair, you know, beard. No, I'm just kidding. There's no one else in here. Uh, oh. Actually, there is one other person in here. As you walk in, uh, you all take look at your seats. You do see one individual in the corner uh very palish gray skin long straggly black hair that goes to the shoulders a very dirty and rough trench coat a brown trench coat on um he has bright orange eyes that uh glasses are over top and he has a crow sitting on his shoulder you see this individual oh oh he looks at all of you. It's so dark. 
Is he spooky? Very. Uh, he looks okay. at all of you and just watches you walk in. The crow follows his, eye his eyes as well. As you walk in, Lucila uh, says, Oberyn will be with you shortly. Please, make yourselves at home. I know that he has a delicious feast arriving. <laughs> the double doors close. Uh, you all can take your seats. There is this one individual just staring at you all in the corner, standing. He's not sitting at the table? Mm-mm. Uh. Hi, I'm I'm Gak. He doesn't respond. He just looks at you. Oh boy, guy, it's is it is it just me that thinks it's weird that that he hasn't said anything? It's um. very weird, Gak. I feel it's very on brand for um, being here. I mean, Lelena was so nice. Would you like to join us? He looks at you, and the crow just caws. Yursa looks at the crow, and she's going to speak with animals. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that's a regret in his laughter. Uh, she's going to say, You and your friend are more than welcome to join us. <laughs> Actually, she's going to use her brooch, so not the... As you talk to the crow... You just hear this cacophony of whispers and sounds and these listing of just places. Um, it is actually make a wisdom saving throw. Oh my. Okay. Let me see what I actually want. Oh, that's a 12. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm pretty. 16. Okay, so you don't take a point of psychic damage. Oh, okay. Um, but you just hear this cacophony and these places being spewed off. Uh, it kind of sounds like... like uh, he is get out of his across the base and the road. Uh, that will be with all them uh, syringe channel. Uh, it's just all of these immediate <laughs> places. Yeah, so as yours is like halfway through, would you like to sit... Uh, she just goes from being really happy and kind to very concerned. The gentleman with the crow on his shoulder just looks at you while it's happening and gives a smile. But you can see there's broken teeth underneath it and it is not not a pretty smile at all. You're so kind of to the everyone else at the table. Well, I don't like this place very much. <laughs> She scoots closer to Basil. Basil comfortingly puts the arm around here, Seth. I don't think he is going to want uh, a flower necklace. Well, that means more for me. Your soul will put one around Basil. <laughs> uh, question. Are you all sitting or standing? I think we're Probably like making our way to the table to find a seat. Yeah. Gak, before they sit down, Gak's gonna turn to Vey and say, Now I know that you said we're not supposed to sit down until they come, but they also said to make ourselves at home. So what do we do in this situation? Yeah, Vey. <laughs> <laughs> I think we still stand. As okay. much as I would hate to say it, and I don't want to give this guy any respect, I think we should stand. Okay, I'm good with standing. 
there are uh hold on seven chairs at this table three on each side and one at the head and you can see the the head chair looks more ornate probably for Oprin. Oh yeah, I'll sit next to him. I'll stand next to the chair next to Oberyn. Okay. Okay. Like it, I like it. I'm gonna put you Okay. That's is a... is there like <laughs> yours is gonna be a big spender. Is there like a chair like right at the other end of the head of the table, but like the other end? There is That's... not. Oh, he's a bitch for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What oh an asshole! God. Drag one of the chairs. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's not that ballsy, okay? Um, so wait, uh, where are they? These are actual. And... So Oberyn is going to be on this. Uh, I'll put Oberyn over here so that you could see him, I guess. Okay. Um, and then any of the other vampies are sitting with us? I now know. Okay. We can put Vey um, next to me and put the empty chair next to Vey that's next to Oberon. Okay. Did my Google just crash? I think it did. Uh oh. LOL! I think technically oh. Rian and Yursa are in different spots if Oberon's over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that where he is? It might be. I think so. Wow. Uh, let's just say Oberon. Let's say Oberon's right here. He's, he's closest okay. to where I am. You said okay. Vay is here? Um, yeah. Gas is oh, going to be at the far I'm just end. Moving. <laughs> okay. Vay is here. <laughs> okay. Man, okay. Man, you're really close to him. Sit here. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I want to sit next chair. to him. I want to sit next you're, to him. This is where you're sitting. This is next to him. Come uh, on, dude. <laughs> Rian's going to stand behind the head of the table. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm trying to put you in front. Uh, I can see everyone's health bars, and I don't like it. <laughs> I, I don't want basil's for some reason. I don't want <laughs> to see a health bar. I don't. Appearance, identity, vision, resource. Uh, display, never display. Fucking give away here. What the fuck? Uh, never display. Boom. Boom. This is. I don't want it. Never display. Boom. Oh no, my health bar. Oh, I should have actually mm -hmm. just made it when you hover. Whatever. We'll, fig we'll figure. Yeah, I'll have to update it later if we ever have combat. Okay. So, with that, is everyone content with their seats? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Are the seats very big? <laughs> Yeah, they're 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 big. They're they have the cushions. They're poofy, you know. Nice. Poofy. I was wondering if the gas knees were like hitting the underneath of the table or not. Ooh, I like this music. Ooh, is that rain? So, I like that. Mm -hmm. It starts raining outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! That was good, John. Yeah. Um. At this point you hear the doors open once again. Walking through is a very familiar figure. One half of his face burned away. Lazarus. Laszlo. Yep, Laszlo walks in. You Lazarus are... walks in. <laughs> the most devious adventuring he party. <laughs> he walks in and says, I don't give a fuck. His name is Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um... He walks in, looks at the party, gives a scouring look, and walks into the opposite corner of where the individual with the crow is. Eventually, after a couple minutes, the door opens once more. And walking through, a well-dressed, imposing figure, long black hair, long black beard into a point there is 
this very pale skin, very tall individual, walks in, Oberyn Blackmore. He steps past you all, walks to his chair, puts his cha- his hand on the on the top of the chair, and says, "Thank you for coming on such short notice. Please be seated." And he takes his chair and sits. Yes, I they sit, sit too. Yep. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. And I will show you a kind of updated version of Oberyn's art because I'm proud of it. There you go. Oh, us. Look at that handsome man. Nice. He oh, has yeah. kind eyes. Oh, John, is that the one you drew? Mm-hmm. Hell okay. yeah, dude. Hell oh, yeah. awesome. He sits down. And you can see that there are these um, servants that kind of walk out of the door to the side, uh, bringing out glasses, filling them with wine for all of you. And you can see a thicker liquid gets poured for Oberyn. Mm. Yummy. (laughs) He sits there and kind of just lets there be a sense. There's a lull in conversation. He just looks around at all of you and smiles gently. Looks over towards the uh, servants and you can see that they start bringing out this feast. There is a roasted hog that's put in the center of the table. There are all kinds of um, different uh, foods put on the table. Potatoes, uh, fruits. Um, It is a feast that you all have never seen before. Um, seems specially prepared for all of you, seeing as vampires don't eat human food. He leans in and says, please, if you are hungry, you can eat if you would like. Or is this strictly business? Um... We haven't eaten yet, so um, we do quite appreciate this lovely meal you've set before us. Of course. Don't worry, it's not poisoned. I didn't think it was. (laughs) But I do have to admit, I'm kind of, I'm thinking about it now. I was going to say the same thing. I feel that if something's not poisoned, most people wouldn't mention that it's not poisoned. I figured all of you coming here have a predisposition of myself and my family anyways. Mm -hmm. There would be no reason to poison you at the beginning of our conversation. So, rest assured that it is not. I... Before we start talking business... I hate to to be a bother, but do you have any milk? He looks <laughs> over. Please, and get our Goliath friend milk. And Thank one you. of the servants kind of leaned down and go really into the kitchen, that, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Milk. <laughs> Thank you. I I asked Lazarus if, if he could tell you to get some milk. I don't know if he relayed that information. He looks to Lazarus and says, he did not. (laughs) No, Gak, you can't do that. He's going to get more abused now. (laughs) We will talk about (laughs) your punishment later. Why Um, didn't you tell me about the milk, Lazarus? (laughs) Why didn't you tell me about the milk? So, you all, I I assume, begin eating. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I'll chow down. Detect good and evil on the food. It is completely evil. That pig <laughs> used to be evil. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, um, never mind. <laughs> that hog. That pig was a Nazi sympathizer. <laughs> <laughs> God. You all eat. Oberyn 
seems to drink many glasses of wine. Yes. Um, wine. The wine. individual with the crow, uh, you see him gesture him over. The individual walks over and leans in, and they whisper amongst each other. Rianne. You can read lips. Motherfucker, you can read lips. You have a fucking ridiculous perception. And it's so effortless, too. It's just... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You read Oberyn's lips as he says, We've gotten word that apparently my daughter and my son are traveling together. <coughs> Send your birds. Mm -hmm. Let me know this is true. And the individual bows his head and walks out <clears throat> of the room. So, I assume the food is well prepared? Mm. Quite delicious, yes. Thank you. Good. Good. I hope the travel here was easy to Elden or to the manor well one was definitely quite I, a bit easier than the other I hope both were but I meant to the manor without a hitch the invitation did nicely thank you for that so as wine is poured once again for everybody it seems the fates, for some odd reason, keep bringing our two parties closer. I figured, well, that instead of waiting another month for dinner, why not now? I mean, we are all both in the same city at the same time. I'm not one for believing in destiny, but this is a great coincidence. I have noticed there has been some hostility between our two families, and I do understand why. I did want to make it clear to you that I have no intentions of harming you, and in hopes to leave some of the tensions, he looks over, Lazarus would like to apologize for his actions the other night. <laughs> Wouldn't you, Lazarus? As he looks to the party and bows almost against his will and says, I apologize for my transgression the other night. I acted out of anger and against my own family, and I am sorry for the harm I have caused all of you. Thank you very much for the apology, Lazarus. I hope we can avoid such uh, ugly confrontations in the future. I do too. Well, now that that is taken care of, why don't we start with small talk? What brings you all to Alden? Well, we had to get closer so we could be ready to come to your party. And we also had no idea how long it was going to take. Hmm. Seems that you have made it here in record time. Mm hmm was a lot faster. As a traveling party who does most traveling, we've gotten pretty quick at it. I assume with some help along the way, correct? Oh, you know, the friendly neighbor. Um, of course, you know, we do have our own magic to help us along the way if needed. Of course, of course. I'd heard that you all traveled from 
the White Crest Mountains, correct? That area, yeah. Tell me, I've never been there myself. What is it like? What is the White oh, Crest Mountains? It's cold. <laughs> is that all? Just cold? Cold Pretty much. And rather boring, honestly. As somebody who grew up around warm weather and um, hot sands and Siri, honestly, mm -hmm. no offense, um, they, but I don't think I've ever been to a place uh, more uneventful. It's a place I'd rather leave sooner. They says, don't worry, I'm pretty sure that if we go to Siri, I'll say the same thing. I'm glad we understand each other like that. Of course. Ah. <sighs> So you say you're from Siri, then? What part? Where from? <laughs> the northern half. A small village in the middle of nowhere, honestly. That's 100% true. <laughs> that is! <laughs> it is currently in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Used his bearing, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The crazy, strange stuff happens in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That's what the car is to say, but anyways. <laughs> Joe, Rianne grew up with four ducks with <laughs> accents like the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty much, yeah. And you, uh, he looks over towards Gak. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Uh, my name's Gak. Where are you from? I'm also from Siri. What part? Oh, if I'm being 100% honest with you, I don't know. <laughs> well, the two middle. individuals from the party that are from the middle of nowhere and ended up somewhere. And what about you two? And he looks to Basil first and then Yursa. Um, I come from Camberfort. If you know of the place, it's in Valley Mine. I've heard of the little town known as Hamberfort. Mm. Um, I've heard that it is disease-ridden disease and disgusting. Um, I guess that's subjective. It has oh, done don't a lot. Don't get me wrong. Those things aren't bad. <laughs> right. Um, it has done a lot better within um, the past year. Um, they've improved on their trade, so it seems that more money and tourism is coming into the town, so I assume that it's just going to keep growing from there. And is that because of <laughs> you all? Do you have any hand in their trade? and them doing much better. Um, well, that's where I met my party. Um, they, it's a pretty quick and easy um, middle ground, I guess you could say, for anybody traveling. So mm. um, it's a very small town, so we all do what we can to help each other. Gak is currently kind of looking around at everybody, and then he looks to Oberon and goes, Um, sorry, sorry if this is wrong. Um, I think, I think that we, when we went to, um, is it Riffolk? Um, when we, or no, Waldbrook? Yeah, I think it's Wellbrook. Uh, we didn't. Aren't you trading a bunch of like wine and stuff? So you're probably sending stuff there. You're probably helping the the economy. No, I am not. We had a plan. Yes. We were supposed to create a trade there. Under the help of my son and daughter, Kyrian and Ophelia, of course. 
But it seems that they had their own plans, and well, that trade, and as he looks directly at Gak, is no longer available. I believe you all are very well aware. <clears throat> I'm sorry they had their own plans. That is fine. It seems that living forever causes people to eventually do something very stupid. I couldn't imagine living forever. How do you keep yourself sane? <laughs> Just barely. <laughs> and you, as he looks to Yursa, and where are you from? Oh, just... Like my friend said, um, I'm also from a very small, small village in the Mallow Grove. Quite far from home, way over here. I would say so. Small village in the Mallow Grove. I haven't heard of it. What's the name? You would ask that, wouldn't you? Uh, <laughs> Yusha doesn't say that. Um, I am from a place called Lunaria. It's, like I said, small, and we do our best to remain away from too many prying eyes. Lunaria. Now this is interesting. I've heard of this place, Lunaria. I've been around a long time, and I've watched the world change in front of me many times. Lunaria is, if I remember correctly, it is a city of elf folk within this forest, correct? Yes, um, a number of Aladrin, to be specific. Um, some other wood elves make up most of the village. It's, again, it's very small. I've also heard that there is an essence of the Feywild that comes from there, and that's where they get their powers and their abilities. Am I correct? Sure. We have a connection to the Feywild. Something that traces back hundreds and hundreds of years, and something that Melora has blessed us with. I have heard tales of these connections to the various planes. Not that I bother with them. But I have heard of these ideas of these so-called Rift Wardens. I hope to meet one one day. They sound very interesting. Yersa just smiles. Anyways. Back to business, I assume. Or we could keep talking. About <clears throat> other things. I understand well, you all have a bedtime. Well, you... You, you asked us. So, I, I don't have any business. I'm fine with just talking. All right. Well, we came here I, at uh, I your request. I would like to know the business. Oberyn looks to the two party members who says they could uh, it, make, keep making small talk, and then Basil, who says she wants to get straight to the business. Do you all need a moment? Um, no. I think we're fine. If my team would like to have small talk, then I can talk smallly. So, you two are from Siri, you are from Lunaria, and you are from Hamberfall. What made you want to decide to become the adventuring type? Well, nothing makes you choose that. Oh. 
course it does. What drives you? What motivates you? It's not a choice, though. <laughs> I mean, I suppose I could choose to not. But that's not the same as deciding to do. I don't know if that makes any sense, but... I don't do this. None of us do. and I don't want to speak for everybody, but I believe it's the same for all of us. You I don't. have a purpose. <laughs> My purpose I mean, is what? to make sure that innocent people, good people, get to live another day in a world that most of the time does not give a shit about them. A world that would be willing to have so many people crush them under their feet. All I want to do is make sure those people, they get another day, another hour, another minute before they get crushed. So you fight for the small folk. You fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. Is this correct? Not necessarily. Small folk, I don't think that can be it. There can be kings and queens that are ants in comparison to other things. Ah, so you know how the world works. I've been around a while. As my companions constantly remind me. <laughs> yeah, he creaks when he gets out of bed. Yes, humans do not last long. <laughs> and the rest of you, the same sentiment. Um, for me, I never left Hamberfort. Um, when I met these fine, pe fine people, we had an instant connection, and they all were leaving, and I all of a sudden couldn't bear the idea of me staying any longer. So I wanted to explore, and they were kind enough to let me join. How wonderful. Honestly, I'm kind of here. Um, it's... It, like accident it like started as like a detour ah so you had plans prior yeah i wanted to, i just wanted to go to school so i was traveling trying to find a school and then uh got caught up in all this mess all these lovable goofballs so you are a scholar e um Gak like looks around. Here's a nods. Yes, I'm a scholar. And what do you study, my friend Gak? Um, I a little bit of this and that. I'm mostly just trying to to learn magic because when I was young, I always reading stories about people who can do magic. Um, and I know a little bit, so I can help people with it. And you? Uh, he looks to Yersa. What motivates you? Why are you an adventurer? Well, I spent most of my life protecting and safeguarding the ones that I love and care for. But I also watched as very innocent people were taken advantage of. I understand what it's like to have kindness mistaken for weakness. And through such, I experienced a lot. And I said to myself, I am not going to let other people suffer if I can do something about it. I'm not going to watch as people who think they are in power step all over others. And she smiles. That is very honorable of you. Well, I am very happy that I have invited you all here 
you all seem very good people who just want to do good in this world. So, I would like to talk business now. Well, I don't think you can get off that easy. Huh. You get to ask us where we're from, why we do what we do, but what about you, Oberon? Where are you from? Why do you do what you do? I have spent hundreds of years trying to figure out where exactly I am from. And that question, I've never been able to answer. I don't know where I originate. I have no memories of my past before I was this. If I figure it out, I'll let you know. Now what drives me? Is he being honest? Make an insight check. Here we go. Here we go. Let me double check my camera to see what's my modifier. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, buddy. Okay. Well, even if he is lying, he's a vampire, so I'm sure his deception is very high. But that is <laughs> a 24, 18 plus 6. Respectable. Um, You can't tell. Oh. You know what the worst part about this is, Jonathan? Hmm. I thought I heard you roll the dice. <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Are you okay, friend? <laughs> <laughs> Brienne was shook to his core by the inability to, to perceive somebody's intentions. No, I sharply inhaled while I had, like, spit in my mouth. And I choked it's on my own from saliva. The drink. <laughs> Good, Holy the poison setting in. You thought it wasn't poisoned, you idiot. <laughs> uh, no, he'll kind of like narrow his eyes and be like, no nod, and he'll let him keep talking. Now, to what drives me, to my intentions. I have spent. Hundreds and hundreds of years doing different things throughout my life. All I care about is my family and our legacy. And I am a businessman. I have built our families wealth and power from nothing. Over the years, I have created very valuable trade with both Dagram and Isvari. You see, our family, my family, our island is home to the largest depository of platinum and gold raw in the world. And, as you would assume, the neighboring would like access to such things. What drives me is power and influence to keep my family and the people I lord over safe. My intention has been, and always will be, to keep myself and those I see safe. Does that answer your question? I think so, but <laughs> I, I suppose there's a, 
a small follow-up question. Mm. Of course, I'm going to strive and do everything I can to keep these people safe. I care a great deal about them. They mean a lot to me. But... How do you defend your family, those you care about? There was a person we saw on the street the other day, yelling and screaming. You've been here for a while. I'm sure you've heard of them. Preaching hellfire and bloody damnation on our good friend Vey here. My question to you is, do you hear people saying terrible things about your family, your kind, and your first thought is to cut their throats and suck them dry? Or is it to move on and know that they're not worth the time? <clears throat> it depends on the threat that they pose to my family. A town crier preaching evil is in the town poses no threat, no more of a threat than an ant beneath my boot. But they're those whose voices are just a little bit louder than the others that draw just enough attention that I unfortunately myself or my family has to act upon. Now let me ask you a question. Has your family been attacked before? Mm. Have you been so desperate that you use everything behind yourself to save or protect those that you love? We have. I have, at least. Then there is a similarity. I only protect my family if they need to be protected. I think there is a misconception with myself. And I totally understand, I mean... Look at me. I am a vampire. But I don't just kill anybody because I can. I don't... slit the throats of those who speak up against me. I do what needs to be done if it's a threat. Just as you all would if someone were to threaten you. I want nothing more than to just be left alone. Does it does it seem as though he's being <laughs> honest? Inside, inside check. check. <laughs> I would like to also inside check. I'm gonna do this just to fuck with you. <laughs> okay, are you doing that to fuck with me, or are you doing that because he's lying? <laughs> You'll never know. Irsa has a 21. Oh, that's good. Rian's was not nearly as good. That's a 9. Yeah, 9. 3 plus 6. Rian, he seems pretty genuine. Okay. Yursa, he seems very genuine. Um, but there's a little bit. Mm-hmm. A little tiny bit um, of joy when he talks about defending his family. Mm. And um, I'm going to speak up. So, since we're all asking questions, hmm. I have two. You first said that you are motivated by power. And then you also said that you want to protect and defend your family. 
Yes. How would you rank those? What comes first? Given the option to protect your family and just be left alone, or to have this massive, immense power over people? Are you wanting to expand? How much power do you need until you feel satiated? <laughs> that was many questions compounded together there. You're a very intelligent man. I think you can handle it. Yeah. You cannot protect the ones you love without power. So in order, if I was to put those things, it would be power, then family. To your People other question. People can also... Oh, you go ahead. I no. didn't mean to interrupt. Please. You are my guests. I was going to say... Family can always be protected when we also pick and choose our battles. Hmm. If there's always a way that doesn't require bloodshed, as both families want the same t kind of thing to protect themselves and their loved ones, it almost seems <laughs> counterintuitive if both parties decide to do everything but keep the people safe. Very wise words. There is something I have learned. Yes, you want to pick and choose your battles. Make sure that you don't pick the wrong fight. I believe that is true for those who do not have enough power. You see, if you have enough power, then those battles you have to pick and choose dissolve away. Because then at that point, people don't want to fight you. And your enemies grow more. But there's nothing they can do about it. So, you would rather meet violence with more violence. Have you ever tried to educate your enemies? Now, I am about 130 years old myself. I spent years working with people who were supposed to be allies and friends. And it was, unfortunately, some people who did turn out to hurt us. But, those people are not the world. We don't lump those people together. It would be foolish to view one bad apple out of a whole batch and throw the batch out. Again, I think there is power through education, and words, and discourse. You can give a, a man a grain of rice and he can eat it now, but if you teach him how to plant and harvest, he could eat forever. I agree. To your point, is that not what's happening now? Am I not? Bringing the peace and educating my, and he looks to all of you, enemies. I guess the only thing that matters is if we're doing the same to you and what our outcome is. Are we all just going to eat tonight or are we going to <clears throat> learn how to feed ourselves forever? I think that is up to you all and what you take away from this conversation. What you do see, you? 
Go ahead. What do you take away from this conversation, Obo? From one equally powerful party to another. <laughs> ah, you do amuse me. My current takeaway from this conversation is that you are all good people, respectable, trying to do right in the world, do the right thing. And I've seen that many times. Let's get down to why I've invited you here. You must be wondering, why would I invite the murderers of my children to dinner? No? The question has crossed my mind. Can't deny that. I want to stress that myself and our family do condone what Kyrian and Ophelia did. They acted on their own accord, and unfortunately using the Blackmoor name has, well, tarnished some of our reputation. We want to make things right. And well, our tensions are dragged in various directions. I invited you with the possibility of righting the wrongs, getting our assistance with cleaning up the mess. All I want is to continue our business and keep the peace between all parties. As you so graciously said, yes, sir. Stop the bloodshed. Now, if you would do this for me, I could pay you more gold and platinum than you have ever seen in your life. Kind of cleaning up, are you suggesting? There are various shipments of that wine still around. Not sure if you know. They need to be destroyed. They need to be taken care of. There are also individuals that act specifically against our family trying to tear down our business in our name. You are adventurers, which means you are of the same cloth as cell swords, mercenaries. Go destroy these wine casks around Valamine. Take out some of my enemies, and we'll call it a truce. I will just say that I am not a soul sword. I'm not a mercenary. I am somebody who does things because I am fighting for what is right. And if, unfortunately, sometimes people who are opposing what is right and what is good stand in the way and that is unfortunate for them because how long will it be Oberyn until you have two more children that decide to disobey you I mean we had our confrontation with Kyrian and Ophelia and then not but a month later we are harassed by your servant Lazarus how long is it until more of your spawn decide that they need more power 
They need to be better. And it doesn't matter who they need to hurt to get that. I don't know if there's any point in a truce because we'll probably just end up killing them to save people again. And then we're in your debt again and again and again and again. Until you can show us some way where this cycle isn't repeated. There's no point in having this conversation. I hate to speak for everyone else here, but I don't want to make a deal if it just means delaying the inevitable. You misinterpret my lack of anger and my peaceful negotiation. You have no chips at the table, Rianne. Nothing to offer. You see, your questions about my family, they are of not your concern. They are of mine. And this is one way I'm choosing to correct. Don't worry, your small mind at what I am going to do with my family. If your family Worry is about... of your concern, then why did you not stop Ophelia and Kyrian? And why did we have to be the ones to do that? I think everyone here wants the same thing. Reassurance, right? Mm. We're not trying to be disrespectful. We're just trying to make sure that you are upholding your end of whatever deal you're trying to strike. Rim's My point end stands. of the deal is gold and platinum, and that's all I will offer you. But you've missed everything we've said. No oh, one I've here heard. said we're motivated by gold and platinum. We're motivated by doing what is right. And if your children are going to continue to attack us, we have to do what is right. Do we not? Oh, by all means, you do. Is what is right... Stopping more people from dying. Absolutely. Is doing what is right stopping those who would kill innocents? Yes. These are the things I am asking you to do. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding. You were upset at what Ophelia and um, the other guy was Kyrian. doing. Kyrian. Were you upset that they did that? I was disappointed that they were found. Because it seems like the problem is stemming from your kids not listening to you. You were talking about how when people live forever, they start to go crazy because they want more power. And you are very powerful, but you're very level-headed, and you know, man, it and I feel like the problem is that your kids don't care that you know what you're doing. And they think they know more than you. Wise words from a scholar. I may not be the best father in the world. But that is not why we are having a conversation. We're not here to talk about my lack in certain areas. We are here to come to an arrangement. And if you do not like what I have set before you, there is another option. Which is? He leans forward and you can tell you can just feel like just the lankiness and size kind of grow almost as he says 
keep the Black Moon name and anything about us from reaching the tip of your tongues. Stop talking about our family. Leave us alone. And he looks at your Yersa. And the next time you interfere in our business, it will be the last. But I think you're failing to realize we did not want to kill your kids. We did not want it to end the way it did. And I promise you, we're not above sparing people's lives. We're not always going to be the heroes, as no one ever is. We realize that we have to stop people who are doing the wrong thing. But what's worrisome is one, instead of you being upset for what they did, you were upset that they were caught. Those are two separate things, which is what we cannot trust. However, we will not always agree on who we think is doing wrong. You say you want us to help you? Sure, we can help you. But as soon as it turns to one of your son, who is also doing something wrong, that's when we will also have a problem. Again, to back up what Basil just said, we want the same thing. I, I think that there's no disagreement over on what, what we both want. We will gladly help. We want those wine casks to be destroyed just as much as you do. I think where we are hesitant is your enemies. You just told us you want us to stay out of your business. If these enemies are truly a threat to you and they are harming your family, Sure. I'm sure we could go and have a conversation with them, and if it turns one way, it turns one way. But if these are simple nuisances, like you said, if these are town criers, if these are people who have not actually done you any harm, that we can't, with good conscience, go and just bully or harm innocent people. But if that's not what you're asking, then I think we are all on the same page. We're just reading different lines. I'm sorry about your children. I really am. It was not self-indulgent. It was not malicious. It, it was not on purpose. It was defending ourselves and doing what is right. There's no way we can atone for that. There's no way we could bring back a life we just said we are willing to do what we can and what is right to help you. And what you just said is the exact reason as to why you are all alive currently. I understand that you were doing the right thing and my children were just collateral. I understand that they were at odds and what they were doing was wrong. I understand that. If you agree to help clean up the mess that they created, which in turn stemmed from your killing of them, then I think we are all on the same page. And we can help each other out. In a weird way. I... I do enjoy your company. And it has been... An honor to see your journey thus far.
Are we allotted a certain amount of time to speak to one another and get back on back to you on an answer? Whether it be a day or so? You must understand this as a traveling party, it changes where we go, what we do. Oh, I totally understand. Let's say a week's time. Very you, you. Would you also be willing to give us the names of the people who are causing you trouble? Not currently. You see, if I give that information away, and you do not accept my offer, then that is information you have against me. But Understandable. One of, one of the things that that Yersha was saying earlier was that it depends on who it is on accept. If it's just someone if if we go to talk to them, but they're not actually causing much of a problem, then we can't in good conscience do anything about it. I can assure you that the people that pose threats to me are not some low lifes, some random individuals like a town crier. One week. In one week's time, I will be sending Lazarus to communicate. I, I will look forward fair. to your I will look forward to your answer. And to my second option. If you think that in any circumstance or scenario the name Blackmore is a vital information, keep it to yourselves. Cleaning up what you said the other night, looking at Yursa, it's been a real pain. I apologize. Oberyn, I do want to say something before we depart for the evening. Yes. And I mean this genuinely. I know that there's been tension between our parties for quite some time, and the majority of this dinner included, but I genuinely want you to know that I... I think at your core you're a very well-intentioned man. I think that you care for your children and your family a great deal. And I find that very admirable. I do. But I think the question you need to ask yourself is if there are people out there who wish to see you gone. Instead of saying, what do I need to do to get rid of them? Maybe you should ask, what do I need to do to change their mind? By getting rid of them, by killing them, by attacking them, you're only continuing to build up that stereotype they have of you in their head. You can do what you want, but I want you to know that I think that you're the right person to make the Blackmore name an honorable, good name, respected. There's so much you could do with the powers you have. So much good you could do for time immemorial, but, but you don't. I don't know. 
I'm sorry if that was presumptuous. I just... You were honest with us, and I wanted to be honest with you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you listening. Well, as he stands up and the chair slides out from behind him, I believe our business has come to an end. Real quick, out of character to the rest of the party. I brought this up to Kayla in a message, but should I ask about Vandrin to see if Vandrin is one of the people who he wants us to? Hurt? I don't think he's. I don't think he's gonna tell us. Regardless. No. Okay. All right. No. I mean, it'd be fun to bring it up to see how he'd react, but I don't think he's gonna tell us. <laughs> oh, Vandrin is one of the people I wanted you to kill. <laughs> because then it could be like, all right, Just now wait a minute. His, There's bonding his there face by saying Vandrin. Yeah. Just no. seen him go. <laughs> no. Uh, as he stands up, Yursa is going to stand. Mm -hmm, same. Old Rod, if you have five minutes, I would like to speak with you alone. Very well. Uh, he walks over slowly to Rian and places his hand on your shoulder and g gently gets right next to your ear. And says, when the world is kind to me, I will consider being kind to it. He removes his hand. Okay. Please, the rest of you, see yourselves out. Lazarus, walk them to the door. And you can see Lazarus just... Yes, sir. Uh, and he walks out, walks with the rest of you. Here, so you are alone in the room with Oberyn. Is the bird dude still there? He is not. He walked out at the beginning. Okay. Thank you. If you would like, you could kill me right now, and that would be okay. The <laughs> he just kind of turns his head to the side I will not lie that is an odd way to start a conversation but I am listening we took something from you and from what I've gathered from you today that's how you do business hmm and what exactly did you take from me? Your children. Ah. Or is that not the way you do business? I would like to be honest and say I do not know what you are getting at. I... I'm getting at that I am very sorry. I am somebody who, when I speak my words to me, they mean everything. We didn't come here to blow smoke, to butter you up, to be kind for kindness sake. We came here to be genuine and honest. I have met people before like you, believe it or not, who look at the world in only shades of gray. There's goodness out there. And I am so sorry that you will, you haven't seen it. And you may never see it. With all due respect. I think you should let me finish. <sighs> Very well, young one. I don't know you, and you don't know me. But I am willingly giving you my life, if that is what you so desperately think is going to make things even. 
We came here because we want to make things right. And I think that you this entire time have been painting yourself to be one way, and this is not who you are. I could be wrong. And that's okay. But it's not too late for things like this. I just wanted to make the offer. And I am sorry if I've wasted your time. And I am sorry for taking your children. I am sorry for mentioning your name. This was all before I had any of the information I had now and what I was doing, what I thought was right. And it has severely messed things up and I am very genuinely sorry and I will do what I can to fix it. You can deal with that with what you will. Make no, a please. persuasion check with advantage. Okay. Ah, uh, she was just gonna say, now please put me in my place if you feel necessary. Ooh, what is that one? Oh, what's spicy? Hold on. Mm. Persuasion. Oh, plus two. Ah, oh, dirty twenty. <laughs> Sturdy. I would have to admit, you might be the wisest in your group. Unfortunately, I was not always like this. However, you talked about seeing the world in black and white. I see the world and the shade it is painted in front of me. I have seen throughout my 2,000 years of undeath humanity kill themselves over and over again. And anything that is not like them is monstrous. Anything that doesn't meet the status quo is cast aside. I see the world and have seen the world through many different colors. But yes, somehow, those colors always blend. I do not wish to put you in your place. I do not wish to threaten you and your family. And if through our business ventures we can come to some sort of arrangement, I would be more than happy to call you an ally. But you have to understand from where I'm standing, and what I've seen. I am being treated like an enemy, so I must act like one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry your world is so sad. I would not have treated you that way. And I know others who wouldn't. Here. And she hands him the necklace. Maybe the flower different... necklace? Yeah. Maybe... Maybe a small bit of color will do you some good. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, Nurse is gonna leave. Yeah, as you're leaving, you kind of get a glance and you can see him looking at the flower necklace. And looks back at you. 
and slightly bows. Yeah. She'll do the same. The rest of your party is at the door as Lazarus looks to all of you. Have, have a good night. And he opens the door and allows you all to exit. Oh, hell yeah. With that. After a tense but maybe productive conversation with Oberyn Blackmore, you leave the Blackmore Estate in the Emerald Groves of Aelden. It is around 10.30 at night. You leave behind the lavish abode, walking through the streets, the Emerald Groves, back to your tavern, contemplating and thinking about what just transpired, the conversations that happened, the fact that you all entered into a house of vampires and exited unharmed. As you walk back to your tavern with many questions and many conversations ahead of you, that is where we're going to end the session. Woo! Oh my um, spaghetti. Goodness. Um, spaghetti. Awesome. And on that note, that Woo. is where we are going to end, and we will see you all back in December. Something Guys. like that. We'll be back in December. We're yes. going to see you guys all back for Book 4, Chapter 8. Yeah! yeah.